Well, uh, dear students, in our previous class, we had discussed about the uh, first type of immunity, that is uh, innate immunity or natural immunity. In that, we have discussed physical barriers, physiological barriers, then cellular barriers and cytokine barriers. So that completes your non-specific immunity. Today we are going to take up the second type of second major type of immunity. That is nothing but acquired immunity. Acquired immunity, or it is also known as also known as <coughs> specific immunity. Specific immunity. Now let's try to understand the terminology here. Acquired, as you know that as the word itself says, this immunity is acquired by an individual after birth. After birth, this immunity is acquired by an individual after birth. Right? That the previous type of immunity was obtained from parents, obtained from <coughs> parents, but this type of immunity is what is known as acquired immunity or specific immunity. Acquired immunity is obtained obtained by the individual by the individual after birth after birth when when he is exposed to exposed to different antigens different types of antigens during his normal life <coughs> diurnal life daily life day to day <coughs> day to day activities during his normal life daily life Whenever he encounters with water, air, whenever he touches many substances, there will be many antigens in that. Many antigens, many pathogens that touches his body, that enter into his body, right? Many pathogens, clear? Many antigens, many pathogens enters. Now, antigen, anti against gen generating, they are known as foreign particles. What particles? Foreign particles. What do you mean by that? These particles are non-self. Non-self means they don't belong to one's body. They don't belong to us. They are not found present in the human body from the beginning. They are not present in the human body. They are non-self. They are foreign. They are foreign particles. They are outside ones. They enter into our body through nose, through mouth, eyes, ears any other openings, right? natural openings and through the things what we touch. So all such foreign particles which don't belong to us, they are not the native of our body, they are known as non-self, they are not self, they are not self, they are known as non-self. Such all such ones are known as antigens, antigens. When antigen enter, antigen enter or uh, now pathogens also you know disease causing, disease causing organisms disease causing organisms when these pathogens antigens pathogens are nothing but like antigens right antigen can be a protein also antigen can be a metal compound metal compound antigen can be a dust particle antigen can be a bacteria bacterial cell a fungal spore fungal spore or a viral particle viral particle metal compound also, minerals also, right, which are not food or which don't enter into the stomach through through food, right, whereas they enter into the blood stream or blood circulation through wound, injury, any other compound, either it's a protein or a carbohydrate, if they enter, right, if they enter into the blood, they may cause certain allergic reactions, right, so all these collectively are known as antigens, antigens. Now when antigen enter into the body, what are produced? Specific antibodies are produced. Antibodies are produced. Now, antigens are foreign particles. What particles? Foreign particles. Against them, anti, against generating, antibody generating particles are known as antigens. So, whenever they enter into our body, what are produced? What are produced? Specific, specific antibodies are produced. Hence, this immunity is also known as specific immunity. This immunity is also known as acquired immunity by why because this type of immunity, this type of immunity is acquired by, obtained by an individual after his birth 
whenever he in encounters with whenever he come across with whenever his ex, his body is exposed to or whenever foreign particles antigens enter into his body through natural openings wounds injury all those things at that time the body immune system immune system in our previous introductory class i told you immune system consists of lymphatic organs and lymphatic tissue lymphatic cells so all these organs right organs tissues and cells they produce b lymphocytes b lymphocytes they produce what specific antibodies specific antibodies why they are specific in order to carry out carry out the binding between antigen and antibody and in order to react with that react with that that's why i told you in the introduction class right very first class of this chapter fever we don't consider fever as a disease at all it's a it's a symptom one of the symptom but whereas moreover it is anything but the biochemical reaction physiological reaction immunological reaction that is taking place in our body when when an antigen for example if this antigen specific to that it binds to antibody in your first year in bio molecules you are studied enzyme substrate complex how an enzyme the structure of the enzyme will be complementary to the structure of the substrate how they go and bind with each other and they form an enzyme substrate complex similarly here also antigen antigen against that specific antibodies are produced antibodies are produced they make an antigen antibody complex and an antibody complex since specific antibodies are produced against specific antigens this type of immunity also referred as specific immunity what it be specific immunity now i hope you are understanding the terminology why it is an acquired immunity because it is an acquired by individual right obtained by individual of his birth whenever he encounters the come across with antigens what are antigens foreign particles non self particles an example of antigens can be protein metal compound it can be it can be a bacterial cell fungal spore or it can be a viral particle or it can be a dust particle or it can be any carbohydrate any metal compound metal compound right now pathogens also you know disease causing organisms pathogens are also a type of a type of antigens right next why it is a specific because it in this type of immunity in one's body in patient's body or an individual body what are produced specific antibodies are produced hence such a type of antibody as such a type of immunity is referred as specific immunity what immunity specific immunity next for example now i told you right whenever the person encounters what do you mean by encounter when he come across when this enters encounters for the first time for the very first time in a child in a child for the very first time any foreign particle enters for example the bacteria enters for the first time this bacteria is entering into the patient's body first time the that, that pathogen that pathogen or an antigen entering into patient's body or one's body so our immune system i mean immune system takes more amount of time to identify that to identify the nature of that what type of antigen it is what proteins it has what is the structure of the antigen what are the molecular of the antigen molecular weight of the antigen what are the chemical composition of the antigen it takes more time more time to analyze to study the nature of antigen to analyze the nature of antigen and then it produces it produces specific specific antibodies specific antibodies so here what is happening for the first time in for example one bacteria like salmonella type a bacteria for example it enters into the child's body for the first time let's consider that as a pathogen our immune system takes how much time more amount of time comparatively more amount of time what for to produce specific antibodies against against this against this and this pathogen or this antigen it takes more time why because it says first time actually first time this bacteria has entered later for example in the second encounter or the second or the second infection or the second second time if the same person is infected with the same pathogen for example salmonella typhi already 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 right now this is what time second time second time 
in his body second time. Already pathogen was present, and they were has entered already. Already what are produced? What are they have produced earlier? Antibodies have produced. Specific antibodies have produced. So at that time, when the first time, why it takes longer time because has to recognize, it has to identify what is the nature of the antigen, what is the chemical composition of the antigen, what is the structure of the antigen, how much is the molecular weight of antigen. Later, when it has produced specific antibodies for the first time in our immune system, there are cells called memory cells. Memory cells. When we talk about T lymphocytes. We say that there are four types of T lymphocytes. The next class we'll talk about that most probably. So at that time we say T killer cells, T helper cells, T memory cells, and T suppressor cells. So in our body, in our body, immune system consists of very important, you know, that memory cells. So why are there as memory cells? Because whenever for the first time specific antibody is produced against a particular antigen, they remember these memory cells. Remember, remember. Remember, <coughs> hence they are what memory cells. They remember the nature, nature of antigen, structure of antigen, structure of antigen, the shape of the antigen, structure of the antigen, chemical composition. So immediately, immediately these memory cells, these memory cells, right? Memory cells. That is the B lymphocytes, the lymphocytes, right? What are B lymphocytes? The lymphocytes that are found present are produced in the bone marrow. We have told in the, in the previous class, bone marrow is the primary lymphatic organ in the, in the immune system, which is of primary lymphatic organ and secondary lymphatic organs. So bone marrow, whatever the lymphocytes, having lymph, lymphocytes, cells, which are arise from, they undergo proliferation, activation, differentiation in the bone marrow of the larger bones, the bone marrow of the larger bones, such cells are known as B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes. So they tie up these memory cells, give an order, give the signal to these B lymphocytes to produce what? Immediately. What to produce? Immediately. This adverb is very important here. This adverb, which one? Immediately. Why? It has taken more time. It, it takes very short time immediately to produce specific antibodies against that. In which, in which infection? In the second infection. Which infection? Second time, same antigen has entered, same pathogen has entered. So our body, our body already has recognized them, already had identified them, and they have remembered the nature of the antigen where in the memory cells of the immune system, memory cells in the type of T lymphocytes. We'll talk about that. What are B lymphocytes? What are T lymphocytes? Fine. Fine. So memory cells remember that, remember the nature of the antigen, structure of the antigen, right? Structure of the antigen. Chemical composition of the antigen, the molecular weight of the antigen. In the next second infection, these memory cells give order, give signal to B lymphocytes to produce immediately to produce what specific antibodies. So in the second encounter, the time taken by the immune system, time taken by the immune system is very low, very short, very short. Why? Because they are starting immediately, very quickly, urgently, immediately specific antibodies are produced. Secondary immune response. What is known as secondary, secondary immune response. Immune response. Now you can understand what we call this first one primary immune response. What is response? Primary immune response. So the concept is only this much that in the primary immune response, body takes longer period of time, more amount of time. Time span will be more there to produce specific antibodies. Whereas in the second, second infection, in the consecutive infection, when the body encounters for the second time the same pathogen, body takes less time because the reason is immune system consists of memory cells. These memory cells remember the antigen about that specific antibodies are produced in the B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes. Clear. Now, what are antibodies? What are antibodies? I told you the definition of antigen. They are nothing but foreign particles, right? Now, right, let's try to understand antibody. Antibody. Antibody, antibody. Clear? Immunoglobulins are antibodies. Immuno, 
globulins, immunoglobulins, they are known as immunoglobulins, or they are also known as antibodies, antibodies. Clear? Both are same. This is immunoglobulin referred as Ig, Ig, or antibody is referred as Ab. Okay? Antibody. Now, immuno refers to immune system, immune system. Globulin, globulin refers to protein part. Globulin, globulin is okay? protein is just part in the first year again in biochemical chemistry. I'm sorry, different types of proteins. Simple proteins, thermoproteins, structural proteins, functional proteins. Right? Immunoglobulins. Now, the proteins produced by immune system. What are antibodies? They are also known as antibodies against. Against what? They are against the antigen. The bodies that are produced by the immune system. The the protein particles are the proteinaceous entities, particles produced by immune cells or immune system. Against what? Against antigen right? protein same right? produced by since they are produced by immune system it is referred as immunoglobulins antibodies against the antigen they are produced what are produced proteins are produced so now the definition of antibody right? the proteins produced by B lymphocytes or by lymphocytes or by immune system remember to make it very easy the proteins produced by specific proteins I don't know uh, word over there the specific proteins produced by immune system against the antigens such proteins are called antibodies such proteins are called antibodies I hope it's clear so antibodies right now when we talk about the structure of the antibody the structure of the antibody clear the structure right antibody all there are five types of antibodies we'll talk about that right IgG immunoglobulin G gamma a, alpha, M, mu, T, delta, and E, epsilon. We'll talk about that. We'll, we'll say in the next class, most probably, after when we discuss the structure of antibody, we'll talk about that. So, in this, uh, in this class, try to let's try to understand the diagram structure of antibody, structure of antibody or immunoglobulin. immunoglobulin. The structure was proposed. When, when immunology was developed as a different science, as a new branch of microbiology, as a new branch of medical microbiology, at this time a lot of research was going on. The structure of antibody was given by, was given by Rodney, Rodney, Porter, Rodney, Porter, I Erol Delman, Erol Delman. In 1972, in the year 1972, these two physiologists, these two medical microbiologists proposed, proposed, gave a detailed structure of the antibody and they say that, this, hence they are also awarded the Nobel Prize. Who are they? Rodney Porter Ryan, Erol, G-E-R-I-N-D, Erol Delman. In the year 1972, they proposed the structure of the antibody and the structure was universally accepted and that was the correct stru structure proposed by them. We will see that now. Right? In the next class, most probably I will explain you the structure of the antibody. Right? Now, diagram you will make a note on the diagram. Right? They are Y shape, what shape? All antibodies are asked, what shape? Y shape, Y shape. Y shaped antibodies. Y shaped antibodies. Y shaped antibodies. They consist of four different chains. Four different chains. How many types of chains? Four chains. Four chains. Four chains. Four different types of chains. Among these four chains, these two are one is this, the other is this, which is basically looks like Y shape, Y shape. 
these chains are bigger, larger, more molecular weight, 540 tons of molecular weight. They are known as heavy chains. Heavy chains. They are known as heavy chains. Heavy chains. Among them, among the four, among us, totally how many chains? Four chains. Among them, two are called heavy chains. The two smaller ones, this one and this one. This is one, this other one. They are smaller in length. Smaller in length. They are known as light chains. Light chains. Light chains, two are known as heavy chains, two are known as light chains. Heavy chains are bigger, light chains are smaller. They have 540 daltons in molecular weight, it has 240 daltons in molecular weight. Now we will label, we try to label this diagram with explanation and do it in the next class because time is uh, going faster here. Fine. So we will try to label these two. All these chains are interconnected by disulfide bonds. They are interconnected by disulfide bonds. What bonds? Disulfide bonds. Here also you find disulfide bonds. Here also you come across disulfide bonds. Here also you come across disulfide bonds. Right? Here also disulfide bonds. Here also disulfide bonds. So these four chains, one is known as heavy chain. These two are heavy chains. These are light chains, they are held together, they are held in the position, they are held together by means of disulfide bonds, disulfide bonds. Now, then in this region, this region, this, this chain has of two parts, one is known as the, one is known as the constant region, Const, one is known as the constant region, constant region, constant region. This is known as variable region, variable region. So this is VR, VR, variable region. This is also variable region. CR, CR, constant region, constant region. So at the back side it has CR, constant region. Here this has VR, variable region. What do you mean by that? In this variable region, I told you in the very beginning itself that antibody is a protein. Hence, when we say it's a protein, it's made up of yes, what? Amino acids, amino acids. So in this region, in the variable region, antibody in, in, in each antibody, there will be specific specific amino acids are there. For example, IgG one type of immunoglobulin. Next class we will discuss IgM, for example. So in this in this region, there are different amino acids. In, in this in this antibody also in the in the in the VR in the variable region different amino acids. This is in the variable region. So in this in this amino acid also in this amino acid also in this region amino acids are same. Amino acids are same. Understand? So here 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 in this also constant region this whole is constant region rather right. So in different types of immunities. In constant region, the, the sequence of amino acids, the number of amino acids remains same. Hence, it is one of the constant in all the types of five types of immunoglobulins IgG, immunoglobulin G, M, A, D, E. This in this region, constant region, the sequence of amino acids, number of amino acids remains same. Hence, it is constant region. Whereas in this variable region, the word itself is variable. So here in G, different amino acids are there in this. In the M, there are different amino acids. Why? In order to create specificity, why there should be a variable amino acids in that in that specific region? Because one immunoglobulin should be different from other immunoglobulin. Why? In order to create specificity against this antigen, specific antibodies are produced. Again, one more antigen, specific antibodies are produced. So in order to create specificity, specificity, maximum five types of antibodies are there in the body. What is the body? Which will be which will be binding with many different types of antigens. So this is known as constant region, variable region. Now this region, I'm labeling it here. This is this is for understanding purpose. I explained you what is constant region, what is variable region. Now this region is known as hinge region, hinge, hinge region, hinges. 
I told you in the in the low motion body movement, the chapter I told you what is hinge joint, hinge joint where the movement, hinge region, hinge region. Now these two together are known as where antigen comes and bind antigen binding binding site antigen binding site clear. So here antigen this specific these two regions binds holds. So when it moves this region hinge region like a hinge joint it helps in the movement to go and attack with the antigen it goes and binds with the antigen and kills the antigen nullifies the effect of antigen destroys the antigen dissolves the antigen many different types of reactions are there that much detail is not there in your second view when you go to first year medical uh, in the medical microbiology you study that different types of immunological reactions between antigen and antibody so here so this side is what side antigen binding side you can easily remember as ABS, ABS, right? Airbags are anti braking system for boys and very easy to remember. Air ABS, antigen binding sites. This also same, this also same. So I have labeled like that. In the region, we have labeled the region, constant region. This whole is to a heavy change to a light change. So you can label this as light chain, you can label this as heavy chain. Heavy chain. This is the structure of structure of antibody, structure of antibody in your exam, in your exam, first three marks, the diagram will be asked, I will continue in my next class, the detailed structure, structural point you have to remember, so I will uh, take up in the next class, in this topic, today's topic we have discussed, acquired immunity, specific immunity, why it is known as acquired, why it is known as specific, what are primary immune response, what is secondary immune response, what is antigen, what is antibody, what are the different types of antibodies, structure in brief I have discussed, in the next class structure I will explain again and after structure we will discuss the different five types of antibodies, watch this class repeatedly, try to understand, fine, make your own running notes, make your own notes, fine, ask the doubts, many students are asking, fine, others also try to ask the doubts, then do take very good care of yourself and your family members. God bless you all. Good luck. Take care.